I never thought I'm going to own a PC in Cartier. Hello, welcome to Swiss Watch King. Today we're going to take a closer look at one of my latest acquisitions. For those who follow me on Instagram saw it already, but for all my YouTube viewers I present it to you right now. I bought another Cartier, but not just any ordinary from the store, and here you'll see what's special about it. When I started buying and collecting watches back in 2011, I didn't have many peers. At that time I wasn't present on social media, I was working at a restaurant and I owned a few pieces. In the restaurant I mostly wore my Swatch System 51 watches and back then I was such a fan that I bought the red, blue and black edition. I owned an Omega Daydate which was my first mechanical watch as well as a grey ceramic Rado which I unfortunately don't own anymore. Once I got into the social media space, particularly Instagram, I found out that there's many people like me and just love watches or obsess about them. Some professionally, but most of the accounts were just watch enthusiasts, sharing their collections, stories and pictures. The deeper I got involved into collecting, or sometimes I like to call it hoarding, my connections around the world grew. One of those connections became Tom, the founder of Singapore Watch Club. After chatting on Instagram we met in person at Dubai Watch Week back when it was much smaller and intimate with all the watchmakers and collectors from all around the world. I was always a fan of Tom's watches because he posted mostly cool independents back then. The only one I can remember particularly which I liked a lot was what I believe a custom manufacturer royale 1770 Voltige with a big balance wheel and super cool dial. After many talks and a few visits to Singapore, I became a member of the club. The first watch that they made was a special Listerlan Classico with a black grand feu enamel dial. A lot of hidden details and it was really cool. From what I remember it was the first black grand feu enamel dial from UN at the time. The next watch that they launched I got asked if I would like one, as Tom knew that I had a thing for Hublot. Quite frankly, I still do. As soon as I saw the first render I confirmed, chose the number and then we waited. It was and still is one of my favorite watches to wear. It's probably the only Hublot that converted so many collector opinions. After that we had a bit of a pause as well and before we knew it there was a new project lined up. As soon as I saw it I was intrigued because I owned Cartier watches already. It was about to become my first unique Cartier. The idea behind the project is to celebrate the 6th anniversary of the Singapore Watch Club. That's why the project also came with 6 different shapes from Cartier which were carefully chosen by Tom. So in total the project features 18 unique creations, 6 shapes in different metals. Or precious metals, we've got platinum, yellow gold and rose gold which I chose. The 3 precious metals represent the 3 core values of the club passion, sincerity and humility. The shapes that were chosen are the cloche, asymmetric, Santos Dumont, Tonneau, Tank Louis Cartier which I have and last but definitely not least the Tank Cintré. This is my first fully rose gold watch and it's absolutely spectacular. Many would say the watch is too small for my wrist but it's an iconic shape as well as the size. Some prominent people that wore the tank Louis Cartier are Lady Diana, which doesn't really prove my point, Andy Warhol and of course the legendary Muhammad Ali. For me this isn't a daily watch, it's a watch for special occasions and when I wanna feel a certain way. The most fun I have with it is going to Cartier boutiques or collectors and make them guess the differences from this and the production model. I love this dial, especially the contrast of colors. So what's unique about this watch? Well first we have a brushed silver dial which isn't in any current model paired with the iconic railway mini track going all the way around the dial. The mini track is blue and at 6 o'clock there's a small marking of SWC short for Singapore Watch Club. What some also take as granted are the blue steel breguet style hands. This is actually something I think Cartier should do in their normal collection since it all started back in 1917 with breguet styled hands. The last detail on the dial which most people don't see is the inverted Roman numeral 6, commemorating the 6th anniversary of the club. I love these easter egg type of details on the watch and it really shows the amount of thinking behind these 18 unique creations. I would say that Cartier is one of the nicest stones of rose gold. The case is iconic, designed by none other than Mr. Louis Cartier himself. The name this watch is obviously bearing. In the crown you can find the black spindle cabochon, the normal production rose gold models currently feature the blue sapphire cabochon, so here we have another special design change. The platinum versions feature a red ruby and the yellow gold versions feature blue sapphire. 
The shape of the case is unmistakably the tank, literally inspired by tanks if seen from above. The sides are polished and the upper and lower parts of the frame or case are brushed. The case pack is closed and brushed, features quite a few inscriptions and obviously one of the core values of the club, in this case, passion. The word passion is featured on all the rose gold models, the word sincerity on yellow gold models and humility on the platinum models. Inside this beauty there's a manual winding caliber so it's really nice to wind every day which is also found in the normal production model. It's super thin and small. If you want to buy a Cartier tank there's many models available today. What intrigues me for example is the Solar Beat model. It comes in a stainless steel case, has a cool futuristic dial component to it and looks the same as a normal tank. What I also like at Cartier is that there's so many options available when it comes to price points as well as materials. You can start really slow with a simple stainless steel quartz tank or Santos or Santos Dumont, American, and if you want you can also buy the mechanical models. They're all in this 2.7 6000 Swiss francs price point, which I think is great. The price of my piece unique model was approximately 16,000 Swiss francs, including all the import and everything around it. Which sounds like a lot, but if you consider that the normal tank run of the mill Louis Cartier, the big model costs 12,300 Swiss francs, I think this is a good deal. To pay approximately 30% more and have a unique Cartier, I think is more than worth it. There is a great article written by George Kramer, which I will link in the description about the custom Cartier order process and experience. So if you want to know more, go check that article out. Let me know which Cartier you aspire to own one day, or if you have one in the collection, share your experience with the community in the comment section below. I would love to hear your stories and thoughts. If you want to see more unique watches, please check out the rest of our video library, I'm sure you will have fun exploring it. What really helps me out a lot is if you just leave a quick like, and if you enjoyed the video, hit that subscribe button. Tom and his fiancée Jose and the team also created a spectacular campaign with a very nice video which I will now play in full. I think it captures the soul of the 6th anniversary creations perfectly. Enjoy the extra video guys at the end, and as always, I'll see you next time.